Good afternoon, this is Debbie Q, and you're listening to The Right Shoe. The Right Shoe is a podcast about all things strange and unusual, especially when it references death. I try to cover cases that something sticks out about it that's either strange or unusual. Uh, today, the podcast is going to be about a Cosmo Donardo, and there's a bit of business to take care of before we get to that. If you want to hear any of my podcasts at any time, they're always on therightshoepodcast.com or any of the podcatcher sites. You can listen to it there, where there's usually pictures that correlate with each episode. Not a lot, but a couple pictures. I try to pick the most relevant or one that really shows what the that story's about. Also, if you want to email me, the link is in on my website. If you go to the right shoe podcast.com, the link is right there on a couple of the pages. And I am very pleased with the emails I've been getting. Very, very nice. Very pleased. If you want to leave a rating, uh, there's, I, I know Apple Podcasts has a rating system. That would be wonderful. But that's all good. I have to say that because I tend to forget that because I get so excited about what I'm about to say. I start blabbing away and then I'm like, oh, I forgot everything. I guess I'm just going to jump right into it today. This story I initially heard about on TV. I, I was sitting probably kind of paying attention. Uh, you know, not. I just remember hearing the name Cosmo. And I always remember that name from the Seinfeld show when Kramer revealed his first name to be Cosmo. And I, I mean, I know that any name can be made real. I just never heard that name before. So when I first heard it, I thought, I, I don't know. I just kept thinking of Seinfeld for, for a while because it, when it first came out, they just kept talking about someone named Cosmo DiNardo and these kids and a couple days where they didn't know what was going on. I don't know. I never really paid attention until it exploded into this huge story that I'm still surprised that it came out of Ben Salem. Cosmo DiNardo was born January 21st, 1997, and he was born to Sandra and Antonio DiNardo, and they lived in Ben Salem, and they were very successful people. They owned several properties, and by several, I, I think I read about 60 properties. Also, they pretty sure they either owned all of it or were partial owners of a place called The Bridge, which is also in Newtown, which is in Bucks County. That is a place that when I, I always knew it was there. I remember a lot of my friends, if for some reason, this sounds so funny to me, but there was a lot of instances when I was going to high school, you know, a parent would find pot or weed laying around and they'd be like, you're going to the bridge. That was this, the big threat. I, I always remember my friend saying I had to go to the bridge because I got caught smoking pot. But I didn't know the Donardo family had owned that. I, I didn't even know they had any parts of it until this all came out. And also, they had a construction company. And I think that was actually the most successful of all their endeavors. Antonio, they showed in the news, he became somewhat of like this run around there, do well. It was a shame. You felt really bad for the mom. I, her name is Sandra and she just she seemed like she had a lot on her plate. That being said, Cosmo was like an eligible bachelor. Again, they lived in Ben Salem. Now, Ben Salem to us, we were in the Northeast, and Ben Salem, it's only about 5, 10 miles from where I sit right now. It's close in proximity. It's different in that it's where, like, when we were younger, that's where the rich kids lived to us. It was like single houses. We were all, like, in tiny row homes. There was a lot of friendships between Ben Salem people and Northeast people. There was a mall in the middle called Woodhaven Mall. It was such a tiny mall. I can remember almost every single store that was in there. I, I could name them to this day. The people, the kids from Ben Salem and the kids from the Northeast would always, like, meet at Woodhaven Mall. It's still there today, Woodhaven, but it, it's just basically like a Home Depot, a, a movie theater, 
it's an outdoor kind of strip mall. It's not a an indoor mall. That mall brings back some of the best memories of my life. So Cosmo Donardo, I saw pictures when he was young. I mean, he's still young, but I saw pictures when he was in high school. Good looking kid. You know, people just flocked to him. They said he was a doll. Like people that had known him his whole life said that he would be right there for anybody. He would like shovel your sidewalk in when it was snowing. He would just help you out no matter or what was needed. He was a good kid. What Sandra, his mother, said, a few things happened and it caused him to tumble. He broke up with his girlfriend and that is traumatic for a young man. Also, there was a, they didn't really go into too much detail, but something with the Navy SEALs, I don't know for what reason, it didn't work out and he fell into depression over this. And then the biggest thing was his mom said that he was in this ATV accident. He was actually pinned under an ATV for several hours. And and he had hit his head on something when, I guess, it, whatever that happened during the accident, he had had a severe head injury. After this accident with the ATV, she said that he became a completely different person. It was night and day, Jekyll and Hyde, not even the same individual. I mean, I you have to believe her because there's proof that she, he went to several facilities to try to get help. He went to Abington Hospital. He went to Belmont Hospital. And Belmont Hospital is intense. Belmont Hospital is a place you go to and, and you, you can't get out of. Like, I actually went to Belmont one time. I had just had my second child and I, I fell into postpartum depression. I don't even know if it was depression. I was just, my mind was scattered and I, I needed help and I got it there. But when you go in there, it is scary because you go in and you sign those papers and you, that door clicks behind you. It's almost like, yeah, you're not getting out. Even if you say, I want out now and I voluntarily committed myself because at first I was really scared and I didn't like it and they were like look even if right now you 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 sign all these papers it's still going to take 24 hours for you to be physically able to leave so I thought okay but you know what it turned out to be the best thing I ever did they got me back on my feet I have nothing but good things to say about the hospital I don't know I I've heard very mixed things about it I went there a long time ago it could be different but the point is is it's intense and if this kid that young needed that intensive therapy something was going on I mean he that head injury or I don't know maybe the depression and then the head injury on top of it caused something massive to happen he really became completely out of control he would go on Facebook and say things like, you know, oh, uh, don't you love having sex and really getting crude about it? You know, before they were flocking to him, now they were, oh, what is wrong with this guy? Pushing him away. Then he started hearing voices and he started becoming extremely violent, violent with his mother. They got into fights. The one time they were driving in the car to one of the facilities, she was trying to get him help. He jumps out of the car. He jumps into this other person's car and says that he was being kidnapped and he actually got arrested for that this kid was on a bad course he was starting to hallucinate you know these doctors that she brought him to they diagnosed him with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia which were only two of the disorders so this kid had problems it, it wasn't like this young kid with that was being you know i'm just ang i'm gonna just act out he really had issues that needed attention and, she, and his mother seemed like she was really going to bat but i think it was just too out of control at this point so all this is going on on the flip side of the story is a kid named jimmy patrick jimmy patrick was raised by his grandparents this part is a little you know not sketchy but it's it was never delved into totally why he was raised by his grandparents but apparently his mother whether it's self-induced or something she couldn't control she could not take care of her son the grandparents always took care of him and he seemed like he was very much adored by his grandmother and his grandfather 
And the grandmother said that one night he told her, it was July 5th, 2017, and Jimmy told her that he wanted to go to Chick-fil-A with his friends. And that was normal for him. He was a good kid. He got into a little trouble here and there, but I... I believe he did get kicked out of school, but he was a good kid that answered his grandmother. Like, he would not just blow her off if she texted him. So he went to Chick-fil-A that night, and she said time was ticking by. It was 2 a.m. in the morning, and she was texting Jimmy Patrick, and Jimmy was not answering. You know, immediately, the grandmom was like, there's just no way he Jimmy would answer me. She called the police and she wanted a missing persons report but the police were like well we can't do that right now we have to wait a certain amount of time especially you know the kid was 19 they waited the appropriate amount of time but she said right away she knew something was wrong because jimmy would always answer her so back to denardo cosmo started doing things that were very much out of character for him really getting in trouble really causing it seemed like his mom especially was very alarmed you know fighting and he seemed to be mentally breaking down he was also caught at some point driving around with a shotgun in the car of which he did get in trouble and he he had to go to court for that now it's a felony under state law anybody that was has been involuntarily committed for psychiatric care which he was with belmont they should go to jail or something like that the judge dismissed this charge due to faulty paperwork now it sounds like the money kind of let him slide through things as a teen he he got in trouble like this kind of stuff but he always managed to get out of it and that's like kind of a bad thing, because when you keep getting away with stuff, away with stuff, away with stuff, you just think you're going to get away with it all the time. And then there comes a time when you can't get out of it. Also, he had a lot of problems with his dad. Now, his dad, they they said he, he was like a philanderer. He cheated on the mom. And Cosmo was understandably angry. I would be mad when i was young getting older definitely dulls the edge but you know when you're younger it would piss off anybody to see your mom or dad cheating on the other partner that's your parents even divorce is big on kids and she she did she even brought in a priest to try and help at one point and he blessed the house he said he felt like a little bit of bad vibes in the basement and then they said parts of ben salem were built over uh ancient grounds i i had never heard that before so i questioned that but bad juju if this priest felt it in the basement, oh, who am I to say it didn't happen? Especially if her son was acting like this. So he blessed the house. Everyone was trying to get Cosmo back to where he was. He was a good, solid kid. And it wasn't just his mom saying this. It was several of his friends who grew up with him. One friend had known him since fourth grade and said it was just unbelievable what he had turned into. So now as the Patricks are wrestling with police to, you know, because he was 19, they, they're, most of the time it is just like a teen, not running away, but just lo- losing track of time and not showing up. So they had to wait for a certain amount of time before they would declare them missing. In the meantime, we switched to two days later, which was July 7, 2017, and there's three other parents that are worried about their children. Tom Mayo, 21, Mark Sturgis, 22, and Dean Finacaro. These three are all missing. Now it's now that's four kids that are missing. But at first, it just was Jimmy Patrick. These parents of the other children were still trying to get to the point where they realized that their kids were really missing suddenly they started going through the surrounding areas because jimmy patrick was from newtown and dean finnecaro was from bristol which is not too far apart he had last been seen with his friend mark tom mayo was in close proximity it was in bucks county they figure out that all four boys are missing so now they know they have a problem and as they were interviewing people and going through the list and there was one police officer in particular 
Officer Freer. She was pretty involved in this, as was Officer Forrester. He finally figures out that there's one name that he keeps hearing besides the four kids missing, and that name is Cosmo Donardo. You know, and he's asking, and, and the, most of the parents were like, we don't even know my son hung out with them. So they're looking for Cosmo now. They go to their Ben Salem home, the police, and he's not there. I guess they're inquiring, you know, about the residents, and they find out that they have a farm located out in Solbury. Solbury is a, a little section in Bucks County that, that is rural. I mean, there there's it's, it's out there. The officer Forrester goes to Solbury. He's looking around the property. He he doesn't see nothing at first, but he, he notices like the, the house that is on the property is like real dilapidated, you know, dusty, screens broken. But he finds this shed in the back, and when he looks in, he sees a car inside. And he says the car, as dusty and crappy as the rest of the, the house looked, and the, the farm itself just didn't look well kept. He said this car looked, you know, brand new. I mean, there was nothing wrong with it. There was no dust on it. He, he leaves the property. He gets a search warrant at this time. When he comes back with the search warrant, he finds the title to the car attacked to the wall you know this why would in the middle of this dilapidated farm this nice car and the title tacked to the wall you know none of it makes sense and it's really making this officer forrester he, he said the the hair on his neck stood up at this point because he knew wherever these four kids were denardo was behind it and how right he was so the shed that's on the property, they're still not certain what's going on if they're going to find who they're looking for here. Is Donardo here? This Nissan Maxima that, that's like looking brand new and, and from the tire marks, they could tell that it was just driven. So they really didn't know what was going on. But when they had the plates run, it came back to a Tom Mayo. When he questioned the plates and they said tom mayo the dispatcher said actually the mom was just here this morning because tom mayo is also missing so they go to the house in ben salem to question sandra denardo and she said cosmo wasn't there and she seemed very upset but more upset that the cops were there than that they were saying look there's these missing kids we don't know where they're at and we don't know where your son is so at the time they were like they really didn't know what was going on everything was coming together in pieces so it, it they didn't know at first they all get together the Bucks County detectives, Solbury police, they lay everything out, who's missing, what they have found so far, and they go back to the farm on in Solbury, which is a very, at night, very dark, very rural. It's not like, the, even Doylestown is, you know, a little town, but it's brighter, lighter. I mean, it's dark and spooky up there. They go inside the shed. Officer Forrester says he notices not only the title to the car on the wall, but also Tom Mayo's diabetic kit. He was diabetic and had to give himself a needle every day or however, you know, multiple times a day. He needed that kit. He couldn't just leave it there. And it was right there with the car. So Mark Sturgis's mom calls Tom Mayo's father and they're both hysterical because when the cops called her, now Mark Sturgis was with Tom Mayer that night. And if Tom Mayer's diabetic kit was there and neither of the guys, the kids are there, she knew it was bad. Then a private investigator calls Tom Mayer's dad. He was, he said, I, I just couldn't believe how big it was getting. It, it, it was snowballing. And in the meantime, Jimmy Patrick's parents still don't know any of the names so she kept holding out hope that he wasn't a part of this whole group the one detective kept conversing with sandra denardo he was trying to keep it light because he, he didn't want to alarm her and have them not be able to find any of these kids as far as they knew the only one that was wasn't complaining about their son missing was denardo's and it was the denardo family residence it, it just made sense that cosmo was 
something was behind it. So wherever he was, the mom must have said, look, you got to go down to the police station and work this out. He shows up at the police station and says he has absolutely no idea where these four kids are. He tells police that him and Dean were driving around that night. They were going to go to Langhorn, but they got into a big fight and then he dropped Dean off and didn't see him again. And he went to a park and stay there until nine o'clock. The investigators said the only thing that they could see out of this whole story was that Donardo was trying to separate himself as much as possible from all of the kids. And his alibi wasn't even really that good because he was by himself. But the cops have nothing they can really hold him on, so they got to let him go. So for now, the story was in the news. And like I said, you know, I'm watching the news and I keep hearing this Cosmo and I'm like, what? The way they were presenting it was almost as if Cosmo was missing too. The cops had talked to Cosmo, but before they really had anything on him and up and, you know, even before they had caught him in the middle, they really weren't sure what happened. But as the news was coming out, it sounded like, was he missing? Did one of the kids uh, take Donardo. Nobody knew what was going on. It was a very confusing story. It was a true mystery. Again, it's Soulberry. Now, they were in Ben Salem, and yes, they were so-called rich family. Some of the other parents were a little ticked because as stuff was coming out. They were finding out just how much Cosmo had gotten away with in the past. And, you know, some of the parents, rightfully so. I, I don't blame one of the dads saying, you know, if his son got caught with a gun in the car, they wouldn't have thrown it out for faulty paperwork. And that's the truth. Money buys justice. And it does. I mean, unfortunately, the parents are, you know, the more things are coming out, they're starting to realize it's got to be Cosmo because they, they're going over his records. All these kids are missing. Now, the cops, of course, already knew because they had Donardo in custody at one point. But they're finding out how much Donardo really was mentally unstable at this point. And again, I there was many people that knew Donardo for many years. And they said that he he changed he 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 just changed whether it was the beginning of the girlfriend and the navy seal that did not work out his his he was going to enlist in the navy seals and it just didn't work out or that atv accident where he was trapped under it and and he he had banged his head something about a head injury something happened to change him completely i mean his mother really sounded i all in all really did try to get him help from what i read i'm not making excuses for the kid i'm just saying on the mother's part she seemed like she really did a lot to get her to try to get her son treatment so as they're going through this, one of the reporters at the Philadelphia Inquirer, he's in touch with kids that knew Donardo, and he gets this picture, and it was in all the magazines. It's the most famous picture of Cosmo. It's the picture of Donardo with these wild eyes pointing a revolver, and it had like a laser attached to it. He looks completely insane in this picture. And I'll put that up on the little thumbnail because that one is so representative of what Cosmo turned into. So we go back to the police and they are utilizing this equipment called the automatic number plate recognition system, which is a technology that uses like a computer. It's on the front and back of all cop cars and it 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 really, or it's even on like closed circuit cameras for the speed cameras, red light cameras. But it's also for cops, like if if there's like a bolo or a, you know, be on the lookout or a, a child's missing, it will scan license plates, and then if it comes through, they they'll get the car that they're looking for. So due to this license plate reader, they find out that Donardo's driving around in Tom Mayo's Nissan that the cop originally had seen in the the shed on the Solberry farm. And he's trying to sell it. So the cops finally have a reason to arrest him. He's got a stolen vehicle and he's trying to sell it. So they, they throw him in jail and they put his bail at a million dollars. And at this point, the cops know Donardo's behind it. So the million dollars bail, the parents are happy. And the cops get an extensive search warrant for the Solberry farm. 
they go in and they start really looking. They, they're, they're digging. I mean, they're going through the grounds big time. Donardo's parents are like freaking out. Like, what are you digging in our farm for? I mean, yeah, I'm sure Donardo wasn't being honest with his parents at this point. The parents didn't know what was going on. So they're asking, why are you digging in the farm? Nobody's telling them anything. They put him at the million dollars bail and his father bails him out. $100,000. Now the parents were just infuriated. I mean, it brings up a whole other whole other issue. I mean, if your child, if you, if you have money and your child is arrested and there's four kids missing, the mail, you know, the bail is, whatever the bail sum is, what do you do? I I mean, what do you as a parent do? Are you going to let your kids sit in jail? Are you going to bail them out? And I, I, I hate to say, I, I believe that most parents would bail their child out. And, and I'm not saying that's right at all. Believe me, I'd be, I'd be banging my head against the wall if I was in the position of these four parents that did not know where, where their children were. You know, but it bring this, this case brings up so many interesting, what would you do? As a parent, you're always going to love your kid. I mean, you, you just are, you can't stop it. Some, you know, not everybody. Most mothers that I know, think about it. What would you do in that situation? The parents are are going crazy. Dean Finicaro's father gets a uh, a call from his cell phone carrier that says that a 911 call was placed from the phone of Dean's. For a second there, his heart like leapt to the moon. You know, oh my God, my son's alive. He's trying to call 911. And then just as instantly, he found that the cops had used the phone to call 911. You know, it's an investigative tool call into their dispatch office. Then there was another incident that was false hope. The car was, you know, it, it cell phones ping. And I think it was, yeah, Tom Mayo's cell phone pinged in Springfield, Delaware County, which is 50 miles away from the Solbury, for an instant, they thought, oh my God, he's, you know, he's not in Solbury or any, you know, he, he's in Delaware County. They got another call back that it had been, now that was in 2017. Already three years later, they have fine tuned these cell phones. Cell phones advance every year very quickly. Now, at first, there was the towers weren't even correct half the time. It it pinged in the wrong place, and it, and actually, when they redid it, then when they triangulated it, it did ping in Solberry. So the kids, all four of them, were last seen with Cosmo Donardo in Solberry, Bucks County. One of the mothers said, "You know, I I knew that it wasn't good. I just that hope." doesn't stop. You know, there's that false hope that something good is going to happen, but you know that, you know, it's hot out. Days are gone past. So now the parents, they go to the farm. There's a patch of dirt that has this like vegetation. They finally find a patch of dirt that like had new growth in it. So they realized that somebody was in there playing around with the dirt to have turned it over so obviously somebody was playing with like a backhoe or something. They keep digging, keep digging, and they, they come to this really bad smell of gasoline. I mean, it's so strong. They know something's wrong. They keep digging, and then they hit this oil tank, which was converted into a pig roaster. Now, as a city girl, I'm not even sure what these terms mean, but I can kind of get that it wasn't good because as they kept digging further, they find this blue tarp and in it are three bodies. And by the clothes and tattoos and such, like even before they got to the DNA, they were able to identify that the kids, that the bodies found were pretty likely to be Tom Mayo. Mark Sturgis and Dean Fenicaro, which sucks. And they arrest Donardo, and this time his bail is set at $5 million. Jimmy's still missing. This was at the time when Jimmy Patrick's grandparents were, you know, his grandmom kept saying, like, I kept praying because she said at first, I did not know any of these kids' names. And then when he wasn't found with the other kids, she thought, is he being held hostage somewhere? Like, what is going on? Where is my grandchild? So the cops realize wherever he is, it cannot be good. 
they go to Donardo and they make a deal with them. They said, if, if you tell us where Jimmy is, we'll take the death penalty off the table. And he agrees. And that's when he comes with a story that is horrible. When they finally got to the real story, and he says that what happened was well, it all started him and this Jimmy Patrick, who he knew from Holy Ghost. That's where the grandmother finally found out the connection between the two of them. He was going to sell Jimmy Patrick a certain amount of weed for $8,000. Now, $8,000, I mean, that's a lot of freaking weed. I, I don't know what was going on there, but okay. And Jimmy only comes with $800. So Cosmo goes through the roof and he was like, what the hell is this? You know, I'm not making money on it as it is. They get out. He, he says, I'll sell you a gun instead. So as he's looking at the gun that Cosmo gave him, he takes a 22 rifle and shoots him dead. Just kicks him to the curb, buries him. Like, like a piece of trash. And that's it. He goes home. I think that little bit of shooting, I don't know, it must have gave him some kind of high because he involves his cousin, Sean Kratz, who, who is from Philly. He was definitely the weakest link in this duo. Originally, Cosmo's mother and Sean Kratz's mom got them together because neither of them seemed to have any friends. So they thought, oh, this is good. We'll get them together. And their parents were first cousins. You know, this will be good for them to have friends. Yeah, it worked out so well. But I don't think Sean would have been involved in any of this if, you know, it just seemed like, gosh, what a, he must regret that living day that he met Donardo. He brings him in and Kratz, he's like a skinny, kind of almost beat up looking kid. He agrees to go along with Donardo to sell weed. But I think Donardo had something else in mind from the beginning. That night, they go back to the farm, and this time they're going to sell Dean Fenicaro a uh, quarter ounce. But Donardo only has two ounces anyway, so he says right off the get-go, it was a robbery. They go to the farm. He tells Sean, why don't you shoot this kid, Dean Fenicaro? But when they get Dean to the farm, Sean, he loses his nerve and he doesn't shoot him. Donardo's frustrated. He comes up. He, he brings Dean up to the, the, I guess, by the shed and he just shoots the kid. I mean, he just shoots him. And he's like, you know, he doesn't just shoot him once. He shoots him a couple times. So now I must, he must have been on a tear because he goes back out to pick out Tom Mayo, Mark Sturgis was with Tom Mayo. And he, as soon as he gets out of the car, he says he shot Tom Mayo, but he only paralyzed him. And this poor kid was on the ground screaming, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. And Donardo takes a backhoe and starts right running him over with the backhoe you know so this mark sturgis is like flipping out he you know they shot him too and he said he put he put so many bullets into mark sturgis i mean it wasn't like you brought these kids up and something happened you got into an argument you got pissed off and shot him no you shot all of these kids multiple times he says he put a lot of bullets into mark sturgis because he was a big kid and eventually he ran out of bullets he gets that back out and he puts them all into the, to this grave that he had dug. He gets the pig roaster, sets it on fire and they leave him and Sean leave. I mean, during the interview, and I'm sure it's got to be on the in the internet, like the interview with the police, he starts almost laughing. You know, they're asking him about Dean Finnecare and he's like, talking about shooting him and he goes oh well his brains were all over the barn didn't you see them and he like giggles it's uh it's so disturbing as he's telling the story at the end he burst into tears it's like all of a sudden it hit him and this part i don't know it goes right up my back he says he starts crying and he says, oh, I ruined my life for nothing. And, and something about the way, the, the whole thing, you're, you're such this Mr. Tough guy and now you're boohooing because you ruined your life. It was so irritating to me. And I kept thinking like, oh, you're Mr. Gangster. You know, I've listened to real gangsters when, when they're being interrogated by the police. And I'll never forget this one guy. He, the cop says to him, you know, you're going to do 20, 30 years for this. And he says, yeah, I can do 20, 30 years standing on my head. 
that's a gangster. And I'm not glorifying them. I'm just saying. I mean, what do you say after that? It's freaking crazy. So then, after all this shooting and killing, they go out for cheesesteaks. Donardo says, oh, I couldn't eat my cheesesteak. My stomach hurt. Uh, that was as far as his uh, sympathy went. And when he cried for his own self, pathetically, it was a that's, a, that's a very messed up tale. It really is sad in every sense of the word. I mean, people were just baffled. Like, when did he turn into this monster? Why? What was the motive? And they bring in Sean. He denies that he was involved. Like, he said he was in the truck the whole time. He finally admits to shooting uh, Finicaro. It wasn't just an Ardo that killed all the kids. He didn't do it at first, but then when they went to the barn, he said he felt like if he wouldn't have done it, you know, Cosmo made it known that if he didn't do it, he would kill him. Now, people were saying if Cosmo never met Sean or if they never hung out that night, even the lawyer of Tom Mayo said, I don't believe that Kratz would have ever gotten involved with anything like this. Like, he was like a low-level kind of you know, maybe a drug dealer here and there, but he wasn't a killer. Donardo got four consecutive life sentences. Kratz chose to, because he struck that deal, and then he pled guilty. Kratz went to trial with it, but he was guilty first degree uh, uh, with Finicaro, and he got manslaughter for the other three. You know, so now that's their life. You ruined four lives, four boys' lives, four families. They were saying like, oh, it's just these blue-collar kids that were brought into this rich psychopath's world. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I I mean, like the, the layout of that sentence. I just think the guy was a freaking idiot. And he he just went off the deep end. Maybe that's what it was. He was a rich kid who just couldn't get what he wanted. So he took it out on these these kids. He's, this has run long. I was going to do this Donald Traub story. Uh, I can tell it real quick. In 1998 and 99. And, and it reminds me of him. That's why I brought it up. As soon as I heard about this story, it reminded me of Donald Trump. He was a young kid in his 20s, early 20s. He, I'll put the pictures on the website because this kid, he, ugh, he he was another loser. Just no friends, whatever. He just starts, he started shooting people. And he injured the first two that he shot. One was on a bike, one was walking But then the big one, Karen Lee Hortis, she was a 42-year-old mother of two, which is heartbreaking. York and Street Road, it was the the giant there, the the supermarket. She was putting her groceries away, and somebody just came up, shot her, took off. And because of the description in the car, it uh, it was a red Oldsmobile. When he did that, when he shot Karen Lee Hortis, he did it in broad daylight and and everyone was i remember that i was living in hapro at the time it was one of the few times i lived outside of philadelphia and the giant was not even a half a mile up the street i could have walked to it everyone was terrified everyone was terrified to go to the store because this guy was just shooting people here it was just some punk he looked so cocky when they had picked him up and i'll tell you what after a couple months of being in jail he did not look cocky anymore and that's exactly how Donardo's going to look i was going to do more about that story but this i was almost gonna have to make this a two-parter that was it this is debbie q and you just listened to another episode of the right shoe